All right, guys. Well, we're going to go ahead and get started um, because um, we do have a session at eight. I want to get you guys finished up here. Okay. Quickly enough so that you have have a decent break. Um, and since it's been a little bit um, uh, since I took a week off um, since we've been together, um, what I wanted to do tonight um, was to kind of circle back and go back to almost a square one from the standpoint of boiling down what you do to a one page plan. Um, you guys, you know, most of you already know I'm very big on planning. Um, I think it's absolutely critical um, to a successful business. Um, and uh, especially um, in today's market, uh, more and more of uh, even the VCs are preferring to see, um, you know, very concise, to the point, um, you know, uh, um, documents. In other words, very clear summaries of what your business is, what your, um, you know, vision and mission um, missions are, and then kind of digging right into um, the uh, financial plan and how that financial plan, uh, how you substantiate it um, and validate what it is that you're going to do um, so that they know that the investment that, they, that they're going to make is, is a worthwhile investment. Um, now, obviously, most of us that are in, 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 in doing what we're doing aren't necessarily going out there to look for investment capital. But from a, a standpoint of ensuring that you succeed in what you're trying to do, planning is absolutely critical. Um, and so what I want to do is I want to back up and kind of talk to you um, for a bit um, about a one-page plan, what it's about, how to, base, how to do it, um, what are some of the things that you can focus in on to help ensure that you have a successful business, okay? Um, now, I can tell you, and I, and I will bring you to this, not tonight, but um, in the next uh, couple of sessions, um, to a um, document that, that I used um, when I ran my business up in Boston that I relied on week, week you know, after week. I mean, basically what it did was a complete roll-up of all the numbers um, through the course of the week, looking at uh, everything from sales to operations and so on, um, and giving it to me in a very concise way so that I could understand what was going on in the business, where where we were, um, uh, you know, struggling, where we needed to, you know, basically be, you know, to be held up in some fashion, whether it was through training, through um, you know, additional funding or whatever it needed to be. Um, and, um, you know, quite frankly, it was, um, you know, something that was just the lifeblood of my business to making sure that I stayed on track and stayed, stayed on focus. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. Um, well, first, does anybody have any questions before I go share my screen? Okay. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up um, a Word document that I put together this afternoon to kind of lay some of this out for you. Let me pull this up so this is out of my way. And I'll put this where this is out of my way, and now we should be good to go. So before I go to this one, let me start here. Um, so... One of the first things that you want to do, and there's there's a couple of different ways to go about this. And in fact, I'm in a process right now where, and in fact, let me jump over to this first. I'm in the process. You can see that, that you know this is stuff that I really do. Um, so I'm in a process right now of kind of redesigning my operations, um, and I'm doing it in in. Uh, um, I'm doing it because of a lot of, uh, uh, because many of the things that Chad's doing right now, it's caused me to um, um, reevaluate a lot of what I was doing and restructure a lot of what I was doing. Um, so this is not even done yet. This is a work in progress, um, as you can probably see, because I've got things that are just sticking out in the nowhere. This is actually going to be 
uh, an entity that I've developed called Totus Learning. You've seen me use that um, the the name. Um, it's a it is a C corporation, um, and what's going to happen is is this arm, which is Totus Learning, will have all of this basically rolled up underneath it. Um, and essentially, what I'm laying out here is a a business where Leatherneck Tech is the holding company. Um, there's um, Veterans Insurance, which is one leg, WatchCloud, which is a second leg, um, the third leg, which will be pulled down, is this Igloo Digital Marketing right here, and then the fourth leg will be Totus Learning. Um, and the way this works is that WatchCloud basically is a business that is focused on uh, specifically people that are su suffering from um, high stress conditions. Um, primarily, its, it's, it's real focus, quite frankly, is um, um, uh, disabled veterans suffering from PTSD. Um, but what we're doing is we're expanding um, the label to include uh, any um, high um, uh, stress type of condition, um, because what we're doing actually can apply um, to you know, more conditions than just PTSD. Um, and also because we are waiting on a decision on a $6 million line, and it's easier to get a $6 million line when I expand the definition than it is to just keep it <coughs> focused on PTSD. Um, so that, that's what, uh, and right now, basically, this is made up of two applications that are actually in beta already. Um, and, uh, and then we have this leg, which is veterans insurance. And this is, uh, this is actually a deal that I initially closed based on uh, LCS and Everlesson. Um, it has actually morphed into something much, much bigger because I'm now a, um, an owner in the company. Um, it involves five other owners, actually no more than that. There's four seasoned insurance uh, guys that came out of the insurance industry. There's two what I would call VC type individuals. They're both attorneys. They're both, uh, you know, got decades of corporate experience, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then there's uh, one guy that is a, um, a disabled veteran that, as I understand it, had Hillary Clinton won the election, he would have been um, uh, one of her cabinet members. He's that kind of high level. Um, uh, so, uh, and, and, and my part is basically the technology piece. Um, and so all of this is going to be served up through uh, my TOTUS learning division and delivered to Veterans Insurance. Um, so I've got two roles. One's essentially selling the, the, the technology into Veterans Insurance and then actually implementing it and managing it across five centers of excellence across the U.S. So this is actually ongoing right now. Um, and, um, part of what I talked to Chad about basically when I went down to, um, went out to Vegas, um, a few days ago, um, then, uh, the Igloo digital marketing piece is basically kind of your typical digital marketing, um, um, company. And so it will handle, um, um, uh, you know, everything from doing, um, uh, audio video work to, um, you know, um, email marketing, um, uh, you know, uh, lead generation, SEO, basically all of it. Um, and then TOTUS Learning and to everything else will roll up under TOTUS Learning. So, um, so what I do is I typically start this way. I start graphically and I kind of lay everything out visually so I can kind of see where the different pieces and parts need to go. Then I go from there. I come over and I start answering some basic questions. Um, so I start with, um, for example, what, you know, what are you going to sell? Um, so you need to answer for yourself, what is it exactly that you're going to sell? And don't be, um, you know, general about it. Be very specific when you answer these questions. So when you, you know, when I ask the question, what will you sell? you need to answer very specifically so that when it comes time to taking that and putting it into a spreadsheet, you can basically move it from here to a spreadsheet and, and then be able to identify 
how many units of whatever that is you're going to sell, what those individual units are going to cost for you to produce and sell, um, and um, and then what are your uh, you know what are your actual cost of sales? In other words, what you know aside from what what the product is that you're selling is going to cost. What is it? That, what are the the costs associated with actually selling it? Um, and you need to be able to answer all those questions. Um, and then, of course, you need to answer the question about who's actually going to buy it. And you need to be um, very precise here as well. You need to, uh, what I typically do is I, I create kind of avatars. In other words, a, um, a kind of a visual um, um, uh, and verbal um, uh, illustration of who the customer is. So I know exactly what my audience is and how to address that audience when it comes time to developing the content, when it comes time to, you know, writing things like the sales um, um, pages and all that kind of stuff. Or if I'm not going to be doing it, um, it becomes even more important to be able to assign it to a, a VA or to, um, you know, somebody that is a specialist in, de in content development or, or things like that, because, um, the quality of the work that you get back is going to be a direct measure to the quality of the instructions you give. Um, so it's really important that you're extremely accurate about this. Um, and then, um, you know, how will your business idea help people? Um, I think it's really important, um, you know, at least for my businesses, um, I, I always like there to be a, a, a real social component to it. I mean, you can probably tell just by this, but the fact that a lot of a lot of what I do is targeted towards disabled veterans. Um, you know, i.e., I'm a disabled veteran, so I have a soft heart for disabled veterans, um, and I want to be able to give back in some way. So um, I like to make sure that the businesses that I plan and develop have some, um, you know, that you know that they help people in so, in some way. Um, any questions about what I've said or shown so far? Or comments? Comments are welcome as well. No, but my husband would love you. He's been trying to get me to do this for months. Well, it's 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 really, I mean, I can't tell you how critical this is. Um, because this can make the difference, literally make the difference between success and failure. Well, seeing um, seeing it actually on paper actually helps because you know. Good, um, and and all of this I'm going to provide copies of it. Well, I'm not going to provide a copy of this, but I'll provide copies of this. <laughs> um, the um, um, and then you get to the kaching part. I mean, you know, what what is it you're going to charge? Um, how are you going to get paid? And how else will you make money from what you're going to do? Because a lot of times there's more than, more than one way to make money from something that you're doing. Um, so it's really important to look at what it is that you're doing and think about the different ways that you can get paid for it and different ways that you can actually monetize it. Um, uh, because, you know, if you can put your efforts into us, uh, you know, into one thing and be able to monetize it in, in multiple ways, it's, um, it's almost as good as recurring in, uh, recurring income, um, you know. So give that some some real thought. Um, then the next part, uh, what I call hustling, is um, how are you going to how are your customers going to learn about you? Now Chad has given so, uh, some really great um, techniques. In fact, I'm implementing his um, technique in terms of um, you know the um, you know, using um, the uh, social media um, as as a primary uh, method of approach. So I'm restructuring right now how I'm set up in terms of social media. Um, you probably some of you may have noticed I've actually you know separated my um, personal profile from um, you know initially I had just my my personal profile up there and everything was getting dumped into it. Now I've completely separated it out, so only my friends and family direct friends and family have access to that profile, whereas my, um, you know, the pri everyday primary profile that, that Facebook uh, recognizes, that's all business. Um, and so, um, and, and what I'm now doing is going back and looking at each one in terms, each business in terms of, do I need to set up a 
um, a, a specific group for it um, if I do, because I want to make sure um, that if and I'll, I'm making the decision this way, if I set up a group, well, one, do I need to set up a group? And if I do, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm ready to really commit myself to the level of effort required um, to be active in that group because you, you know, it, it's pointless to create a group unless you're actually going to be in there and be very proactive in terms of developing that group and, and building that relationship with the group um, like Chad is doing. Um, so, you know, it's one thing if you've got one group, but then you start multiplying that, you can quickly see just from watching Chad, you can quickly see the time commitment that's involved, especially when you start talking about multiple groups, um, and then organizing that time in a way that that's uh, effective relative to everything else that you're going to be doing. Um, so it's, it's no small commitment. Um, and so it's something that you really need to think through. Um, and think carefully about. Sometimes you can take care of it through partners. Um, sometimes you can take care of it through, um, um, you know, may, maybe a, a VA to support some of the ancillary work, but the real core work of developing that relationship has to be you um, because that's who, you know, that's who they're buying from. Um, and so, you know, give that some serious thought. Um, so, you know, there are multiple ways for customers to learn about your business. You need to think through each and every one of them and how you're going to um, implement it um, for your business. Um, and then what are the ways you can encourage referrals? Um, I get a tremendous amount of business from referrals. In fact, most of my business right now comes from referrals. Um, but, uh, you know, you can't just rely on referrals alone. Um, so you know, really give some serious thought about um, uh, this. Um, I'm sorry, hold on one second, let me decline this. Um, so, um, um, you know, so list this stuff out. And like I said, try to be as specific as you, um, as you can. Um, and then when it comes to success, um, you know, set metrics for yourself. Um, you know, don't just say, okay, this is going to be successful if I start giving money in the bank. Um, you know, really set some serious metrics so that you can measure how you're performing um, and then what you need to do um, to be able to adjust if you're not hitting those metrics um, or even if you're exceeding those metrics, what, you know, what you need to do. Because what happens with every business um, is that you go through plateaus. Um, you'll actually go through kind of plateaus where you will transition um, as you hit those plateaus. and um, you know, that's, that's where many companies, especially small businesses, fail. They get to a certain plateau. They're not ready for the, the challenges and the obstacles that those, you know, that that plateau may present, um, and they can't get through it. They can't get past it, and so they collapse. Um, a lot of it tends to center around, um, you know, the management of cash flow. Um, you'll hear me say that, uh, you know, Time and time again, that cash flow is king, um, especially for a small business. You really need to to understand and manage your cash flow extremely effectively, um, because if you don't, it's it's really going to come back around and grab you. Um, um, so you know, make sure that you pay very close attention to that. Um, and then finally, um, you know, you want to be going through the process of constantly reviewing your business, and that's why I say. You know, you want a one page plan that is being constantly updated and refreshed in terms of the data so that you're looking at, um, you know, real refreshed data on an ongoing basis. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, years ago, uh, when, in fact, when I started um, in the corporate world, um, I worked in the heavy construction industry. I was designing and building uh, products specifically for the heavy construction industry. And one of the things that I was absolutely amazed by, um, and this is going, in fact, in fact I had a, a, a conversation with um, the um, head of a fairly large construction company not long ago, and I was amazed to find out that they, they still have um, one of the problems they still suffer from, and, and, and that problem is this. They have things that go on in the field. 
Um, and these are very large construction. I mean, it could be the, you know, for example, the construction of a dam or the construction of uh, an airfield or, um, you know, a ma major, um, uh, you know, heavy highway project or something along those lines. They can literally go two weeks without getting updated data in the office. In, other words, in the office where the engineers are sitting, where they're doing the design work and so, and so on, it can be two weeks of, of um, delay between what's happening in the field and the information that they actually have that they're actually making decisions on in the office, which is, you know, just, uh, I mean, I was flabbergasted the first time I ever heard that. Um, and I've seen it over and over again. Um, and it's simply be the, because of the challenges of collecting the data that's required and then getting that data to the people that need to have it um, and through the very stages that it needs to go to before they even get it. Um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a serious problem. Um, so when you look at your business, um, you know, you, you may not have, um, you know, two week delays, but you're still going to have, um, you know, issues that are, um, you know, where there are time delays in terms of between the time that you've learned of the problem to the time that you've been able to solve that problem. And those time delays um, can have a real impact on your business. Um, you know, so one of the suggestions I, I, I make to you is that, um, you know, anytime you have a concern, a challenge, or an open question, write it down and then try to come up with a couple of solutions for whatever that is. Um, and keep a running um, history of that information um, so that you, you have something to always refer back to because um, one of the really valuable tools that you can leverage in your business is the historical record. Um, you know, especially when you start going into future years, when you start doing, you know, for example, going from year one to year two and planning for year two, well, the history from year one gives you a tremendous um, value in that planning process, um, especially if you've collected the data correctly. Um, so really pay attention to this stuff because otherwise you go into year two, if you've not collected that data, then you're back to the drawing board of throwing darts at the wall, trying to figure out what you're going to do for year two because you haven't collected the data. Um, so, you know, be, you know, be really diligent about this process. Um, questions at this point? Anybody? Okay. All right. So what I did is I kind of laid out and there's, there's a, a number of different um, layouts that, that I use. Um, and I'm, I'm going to start giving you some of these things um, again over the coming weeks. Um, this is one. Um, basically what this lays out, um, and I've given you some descriptions for, for each category. Um, so for example, um, you know, you start with, um, if you have key partners. Um, so for example, in my business, I have key partners in each of the major business areas. I'm not just doing it, you know, all by myself. Um, you know, I would bas basically say, if you looked at that and, and thought, you know, Derek is doing this all by himself. I'd say I would be a, you know, a flaming idiot to try to do all of this by myself. Um, it's, it's a lot. Um, and, you know, I, and this is where I, I think a lot of entrepreneurs get themselves in a lot of trouble because what you really want to do is you want to, um, especially if you're just starting out and if, if this is the, you know, and especially if this is the first business that you've ever um, you know, really tried to launch and build um, um, properly, uh, you want to make sure that your focus is as narrow as it can be to achieve the goals that you need to achieve. Um, so, and what I mean by that is that, you know, you, what you'd want to do is, you know, take, for example, Watch Cloud and not do any of this other stuff, but only Watch Cloud. And then within Watch Cloud, you'd only want to do one or two things to start. Um, in fact, what I generally recommend to the people I coach is focus in and target in on one specific thing and build that 
uh, and get it to a, a level of success and then expand. Um, I think what happens um, and what I see a lot in this business, and of course, everybody hears about shiny object syndrome, is um, that, you know, that very problem that you, you react to because you're in a, in a position where you need income. Um, and so you, you, you react to every opportunity that comes your way because it, it may signify potential income for you. And then pretty soon you find yourself just spread in all different directions and you're not getting anything done. Um, so the real challenge for most business people getting started like this is to stay highly focused on you know, a key objective and carry that objective all the way through to achievement um, and, and ignore everything else. Um, you'll have plenty of time, I promise you, to be able to expand your business as it's appropriate, um, but stay very narrowly focused, especially if you're just doing this for the first time. Um, you're going to have a much greater chance of success doing that than trying to respond to too many things. Okay. Um, but if you do have, even if it's just a, 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 you know, a single enterprise, if you do have partners, you want to write down, um, you know, obviously who your key suppliers are, who your key partners are, and how they contribute to the overall goals. Okay. Um, this is something that's, that's really important. This was a lesson I learned back in my early 20s. Um, you know, I told, you know, most of you know, I, I, I made my first seven figure business back in my uh, mid 20s, um, but I also lost it because of my um, naivete when it came to partnerships. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's really, really important that you understand exactly um, on both sides uh, the, who your partners are and who your suppliers are, and specifically what they do and what their contribution is to your overall goals. Um, you know, so that's really important. Um, next thing you want to do is you also want to look at, um, um, you know, your key activities. Ask yourself, what are the activities that you need to take place in order for you to deliver on your value proposition? So that takes some work because, you know, first off, you got to, you know, step back think about what your value proposition is. Um, and then you got to think about what are the activities that you've got to execute on in order to, to deliver on that value proposition and get these written down. Okay. And maintain these because what you're going to find yourself doing, if you don't write it down is that's where you're going to find yourself sliding because you're going to start picking up on other things. And it's really easy to do when you don't put it down on paper. Um, it can just kind of happen and you don't want that happening to yourself. Um, again, your value proposition, what is it you're offering and why are you different? Okay. And that's why I have this dead center of the paper because this is what it's all about. Okay. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give an example. Um, if you are, um, well, let's, 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 um, let's probe the group here for a second. Um, somebody, um, that's on the call. Um, would somebody be willing me willing to tell me what it is that you're offering? No, it's what is what what product or what is it that you're offering? Anybody? Oh, don't make me tell it myself. Come on, somebody who's 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 uh, willing to tell me what product it is that they're they're offering. What's one of the, one of your offerings? Okay, I, I can go. Thank um, you, Lester. My offer is actually uh, initially uh, to be general counsel. Okay. So you're looking to be general counsel for some small business people. Micro, yeah, micro. Okay. All right. And so what what is it um, about what you're offering that makes you different from anybody else? Why would I want to come by? Why would I come and want to use your services over somebody else's? Well, at the moment, uh, there isn't too much being available to micro and small businesses by way of general counsel. Okay. Um, the, uh, most of them tend to operate with uh, large co corporations. Okay. Uh, so there's, it's an underserved market. 
Uh, and, okay. and is that, and are you reflecting that then in your messaging when you, when you um, do your marketing? Uh, yes, I'm just developing that marketing side of it because uh, I'm still collecting uh, social proof about testimonials okay. and stuff. Uh, okay. More on a one-to-one -one basis. So okay, that's great. Coaching kind of stuff. Okay. So, guys, what the th the thing you want to do? Sorry, I grabbed the wrong thing. Um, the thing that you want to do is. Uh, it's really important that you look at each and everything that you're offering. And if they are associated, in other words, if they, you know, let's say, for example, that you're, you're um, providing, um, let, let's just say that you're an ever, ever less an agency license holder. And so um, because you're um, um, selling ever less than, um, what you're going to be doing is, um, let, let's just say that you're selling Everlesson, okay? Well, there's a lot of other people that are selling Everlesson. So what is it about you in terms of how you're selling Everlesson that makes you different? And what you need to be able to do, each and every one of you needs to be able to do, it doesn't matter what it is you're selling, whether it's Everlesson, whether it's course development on Everlesson, whether it's training people um, to do course development on Everlesson, whether it's um, uh, you know, uh, developing a, a complete training center, whatever it is, you need to be able to one, say precisely what it is that you're doing. And then you need to be able to say why you're different from anybody else, because people are going to come to you, not only because they know, like, and trust you, but they're going to come to you. Um, you're going to give them, you know, one of the reasons you're going to give them for coming to you in the first place is is that why you're different it's it's that difference that's going to draw people to you do you ever, do you ever everybody understand that so maybe i can elaborate on what i'm doing uh i'm providing general counsel using chad's uh everlesson lcs and uh, yeah I, 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 what, what the, i would, uh, you know what i would suggest for you Les, is is that um, you know, one, you want to use language that is going to, you know, create, create your avatar. So you have an understanding, a very clear picture of, of the clientele that you're selling to using language that is reflective of that clientele and then explaining to that clientele in that language, um, you know, that, that you are providing a, a, um, a suite of services that are tailored specifically to their needs, um, you know, as opposed to, you know, you know, they're going to some other general counsel. <clears throat> uh, yes, uh, the, uh, I actually, ha I'm a little over my, uh, uh, I got more than I can handle at the moment. Uh, because sure. I, <laughs> I got, uh, in touch with the, one of these operations that has a global uh, uh, um, thing into, they're into uh, running. So this is why Chad stuff actually got more interesting because uh, they run what they call uh, compassion games. Right. Uh, and uh, it's a, uh, they have a network of uh, organizations globally uh, on a very large scale, including, for example, Stanford University has, right. a, has a thing on, on compassion. So anyway, they have these events. Uh, and apparently, uh, the guy I was talking to uh, informed me that what I'm doing is something that they need, which is, in his description, is what he called co-management. Mm -hmm. uh, because they have a lot of other aspects of the businesses but they didn't have that part of it so sure. effectively he was recruiting me to be uh, but th this was bigger than i had anticipated right right so I, i'm uh, well and that's something that you're going to have to you know um you know wrestle with and and make a decision on it. you're going to have to look at what the demands of you know that um uh, project are and whether those demands go beyond, you know, the scope of what you want to do or what you want to offer. 
Um, and, and does it take you away from whatever your core mission is? Um, that, that's one of the reasons why for each and every one of you, it's really important to understand not only kind of what your vision is, but more importantly, what your mission is. Um, and then always, always ask yourself every single time when you're about to do something or engage in something, ask yourself the question, is what I'm about to do going to move me closer to the accomplishment of my mission? Because if it's not, you shouldn't do it. It's just going to take you further away. Uh, and then, then it's going to cause some real problems for you. Um, so really understand what your mission statement is and constantly probe yourself and probe your activities with that, that question because um, it can really make the difference between success and failure. Okay. Um, and then moving on, customer relationships. How are you building the relationships with your customers? And then constantly asking yourself, is it working? And one of the things I also suggest that you do is in every, every aspect of this and other pieces that I'm going to give you, try to build some form of metrics in with each one of these. Because it's one thing to just say, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm building great relationships with my uh, customers in my group. Um, and, you know, it really seems to be working as opposed to having some form of metric that you're looking at. So for example, you know, this week I've got 300 people in my group and next week I've got 500 people in my group. And the week after that, I've got 700 people in my group. And, you know, I run a survey every once in a while that probes the group to see how I'm doing and I'm getting some responses back from that. And those really measuring what it is that you're doing. So you're not just making ad hoc um, uh, decisions that are based on um, intuition. Um, you want to try to get some real hard metrics on every aspect of what you do um, to know whether or not you're actually succeeding or failing, uh, or at least moving in a positive direction, okay? Um, then you wanna look at your customer segments. Um, who is your mass or, and or niche markets? Um, you know, I always recommend to, to people, um, you know, identify a niche to start with. Don't try to go to a mass market to begin with. Don't try to go to you know, multiple different niche markets unless there is a compelling or driving reason to do so. Target a, a small, you know, especially if this is the first time you've ever done this, target a small niche market that you can manage and really hone in and target that particular niche and stay focused on it and everything that you do and achieve success with that niche. Once you've achieved success with that niche, then you can start to expand out. And then when you expand out, you've got a, a foundation upon which to expand. But if you start right at the beginning, trying to tackle multiple niches all at the same time, and you've never done this before, you're gonna have a mess on your hands. So really try to stay focused and try to make sure that your definitions are very clear. The reason for a document like this, sorry, a reason for a document like this and having it written down and, and refreshed on a regular basis and in front of you is because it's going to help you to stay focused. Okay. Um, then you look at your channels, look at the phases your product is going through. Um, this is everything from awareness and distribution to after sales and service. So, you know, in, in, and, and in, in your case, most of you, okay, you're, you're talking about a, a, a couple of different things. For example, in the case of Everlesson, that is not your product, that's Chad's product, and that's Chad's product from awareness through distribution and after sales service. You, on the other hand, are taking that product in its state, whatever that state is at any given time, and you're taking it from there and doing something with it. Well, it's that something that you're doing with it. That is your product. 
that's the phases you need to be looking at. And the, your awareness is tied back to where Chad is at at any given moment relative to what you're trying to do. What, where you're going to be looking at it from concept through completion is where you're building a product, whether it's using Everlesson as part of that build process, or it's, um, you know, it's simply the delivery mechanism for the product that you build. Does everybody follow me? Anybody confused about what I was just saying? Uh, yes, uh, I think uh, so. Chad's stuff in my situation would be a means to an end. Uh, where Correct. I, I'm not actually, uh, I would, it, it's useful because it incorporates a number of features that I can uh, use to monetize a thing, like the partner gamification stuff. Uh, but essentially, uh, I could use something else too. It's just the Chad's thing is best suited right now. Correct. And the other thing that you want to keep in mind is that, and, and the difference I'm really trying to get to is that if I'm, for example, if I'm building, well, I'll take, for example, the application that I built for um, Watch Cloud is something that was originally conceptualized by my um, partner. She brought me in because she had no experience with, developing a product or bringing a product to market but from basically from concept to completion it's our product if something goes wrong if there's something if there's a problem with it etc it's you know it's completely dependent on us to resolve everything but if you have a situation where your product is dependent on another piece that you have no control over then that's a different process and you have to be you know you have to be um, very aware of that at all times and where things are at at all times because you know you're again you're dependent on that piece so if something goes wrong with that piece you don't have any ability to make a change or effect a fix they do your only ability is to to you know basically shout out and say hey get this thing fixed um but you can't necessarily fix it yourself you see what i'm saying so there's a different process there and you've got to be aware of it when you're looking at the product or products that you're selling is it something that you've conceptualized and are bringing to market from from concept to completion or is it a piece of what you're doing that is where the dependence lies with somebody else okay and it's really important to always kind of keep and you know keep track of where these things are at because these are things that can impact your business and they can impact timing um, they can impact customer relationships they can impact a lot of things um, so it's something you need to be really cognizant of okay key resources what resources do you require to function Okay, these in, can include all kinds of things from physical, human, financial, and intellectual resources. So one of the things you need to, to be always aware of are what are those key resources, and you need to keep them you know, documented in front of you because these will change. And you've got to manage those resources um, because the more effective you are at managing those resources, the more effective you're going to be at successfully delivering to the market what it is that you're you're trying to deliver okay then you've got your cost structures okay for small business people what i always hone in on in this area are the small numbers okay it's the little stuff that's going to bury you it's the little stuff that you don't think about and you just spend it because it's you know hey it's only five bucks or hey it's only 20 bucks or it's you know it's those small dollars that add up dramatically over time. And if you don't pay attention to them, those are the numbers that are going to bite you in the butt and put you out of business. Because everybody pays attention to the big numbers. You know, you got to spend, um, you know, if you got to spend, let's say, for example, um, you know, five, uh, five grand um, for um, a um you know mentoring session or eight grand for a mentoring session or whatever those big dollars you pay very close attention to because 
you know, you're funding this yourself. Okay. And, uh, you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but most of us are not gazillionaires. So, you know, every penny counts. So it's really, really important that you pay attention to the small dollars because most of the time you don't. And, you know, one of the, one of the challenges that I give, um, you know, I've given this to a couple of my, my uh, um, coaching students and, um, you know, I've done this myself. Um, take a month, sometimes it may even take two months, and literally write down every single penny you spend. Every penny, even if it's one cent, write it down, document it. And then at the end of the month, go back and take a look at what you spent your money on. And you're going to be surprised at the amount of money you spend that is for, you know, nonsensical stuff. It's a really good and important exercise to do so that you become really genuinely aware of your um, expenditures. Okay. Because, you know, in, in a small business, the management of those small dollars is what's going to really um, you know, ensure your success. So really pay to remember, I keep saying cash flow is king, cash flow is king, pay attention to your cash flow. And one of the most important things to do, especially when you're starting out is making sure that you're cutting every non necessary expense that you can cut. And then obviously, cause you only can do one of two things, either increase your sales or cut your expenses. That's, 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 you know, those are your options and you've got, you know, everybody's got expenses that they can't lower their fixed costs. So that even limits you further. So you got to pay really close attention. And of course, then the, your revenue streams, look at what you're charging. And if you could be charging more in most cases, in fact, I'm going to work, you know, wager to say in every case, with every person on this call and everybody that's an agency license holder, I can almost guarantee you that with every single one of you, I could work with you and, and show you that you're not charging enough money. Most people leave money on the table. They don't charge enough. And the reason is, is because it's not something that you're, most people are comfortable with. So when you're not comfortable with charging money for something, the tendency is to charge less. Okay. But in most cases, if you really think, think it through and really look at the numbers, okay, look at the value of your time. Your time is extremely valuable. Everything you do involves your time. Look at every expense that's associated with what it is that you're doing. Every expense even the small pennies. And I would dare to say, if you add all that stuff up, you're going, to, you're going to realize that you're not getting enough money for what you're doing. You're undercharging. Plus, most of you are not comfortable going to the table and, and going through the closing process. You know, a lot of new business owners don't know how to close. And so when they go to the table for the close, they, again, the easiest thing to do is cut the price. Now, I remember when I first started, you know, trying to ask somebody, um, you know, for $250 or $300 an hour for my time scared the crap out of me. I couldn't do it. So my first, when I first started, I was charging $80 an hour. And I got a lot of business. But I also got a lot of business that wasn't business that I really needed or that or or that was good. You know, there's a difference between good business and bad business. I mean, there's a lot of people that are a nightmare to deal with. And so what happens? They end up costing you more because you have to spend more time with them. You have to do more handholding. You've got to do more work. And all of that adds up. So really think about your revenue streams and what you're charging and, and validate the, the uh, prices that you're charging. 
go through the, 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 some of the pricing work that I've given you before, and we'll do it again. But really think about your pricing. Okay, so this sheet basically is a, uh, you know, a one page kind of overall planning sheet. Now, the sheet that I use, I have a, a sheet that I use that's, you know, again, it's what I call my operations sheet. And it's one that I use from week to week. And it really is more like a spreadsheet than anything else because it's really rolling up numbers and looking at the numbers on a, on a, um, almost a daily basis, but it rolls up on a, on a weekly basis. Um, and, um, you know, I'll be giving that to you later. But this sheet right here, if you do this right here, you're going to be in a really good starting place for your business. So I'm going to provide this to everybody. So any questions about what I've covered here? Any questions at all? You haven't got any insurance stuff in there, right? The insurance comes up under part of the cost structure. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, there's, and, and that's, that's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a good point. In other words, I, I, with this sheet, I, I wasn't going into those kinds of details, but, um, you know, do not at a bare minimum, make sure that you get general liability insurance um, um, for your business. That's actually, I mean, that is the bare bones, bare bottom minimum that you need to have. Okay. And then the, the types of insurance you need to have is really dependent on the nature of your business. So for example, um, when I was in Boston, I ran a managed services practice. Um, and so there were, uh, you know, the other types of insurance I needed to have included, um, errors in admissions because, um, we were, you know, constantly signing contracts and involved in um, not only the, you know, work product that we were doing, but also the work products of other vendors and so on. And so um, you wanted to make sure that because of an error or an, or an accidental omission in a contract that ended up being worth millions of dollars didn't come around and shut me down. Okay. So that's one, you know, one kind of insurance. Um, another type of insurance, um, you know, had to had to deal with the the physical inventory that was being carried and delivered and installed and, and maintained and so on. Um, so there's a, a, a variety of different insurance products um, that you may need to look at depending on the type of business that you have. But the the, the bare minimum is going to be general liability because one of the things that's going to happen and you're going to run into this at some point. Um, especially when you start dealing with larger companies, they're going to want to be co-insured, meaning that um, when you sign a contract with them, they're going to want to know that you've got a minimum of, you know, a million dollars worth of, of general liability or five million dollars worth of general liability or whatever the number is. And then they're going to want to make sure that you contact your insurance company and have them listed as a co-insured. Um, that's a it's a very common practice that happens. Um, so. And there's, you know, there are plenty of companies that won't do business with you if you don't have the proper insurance in place. Um, so again, general liability, general liability, bare bones need to have it. Any other questions? Anything at all? Was this helpful? Extremely. It is. Okay. Yep. Um, what I'm going to offer you is, as I, again, I will put this up in the share. Um, I'll put it up there sometime tonight. Um, if, as you start working with it and you start trying to fill it out, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Okay. Thank you. Okay, yeah. guys. Great session. We're going to end right at seven o'clock because I know we have our session at eight. Um, and um, you know, so. Uh, <laughs> For those of you that are joining me at eight, I'll see you at eight. Otherwise, thank you very much. Hey, Derek. Um, yeah. Just this is aside from this other stuff. I had, one, I had a question about your warrior or your, um, what's that company that you have for the disabled? Oh, oh, um, you mean uh, Watch Cloud? PTSD. Yeah, Watch Cloud. Watch Cloud. That was it. Yep. Yep. Um, I have a friend whose son just got out of jail okay he was in for like 
nine months in Texas. Okay. In the summer, <laughs> they do not yeah. have air conditioning in this in the in the jails here. Yeah, I'm aware. And there was like about seventy two people, I think, in one jail he was in that died because of the heat. Oh and he gosh. came back totally different. Okay. You know? And the more I talk to her, the more it sounds like PTSD. Okay. Um, and so why, I was wondering you, if that's the this? type of group that you cover. Um, well, what 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 we do with that product basically, um, there, there's two products, and they're like I said, they're both in beta. But one product basically, what it does is um, think of it like an early warning system, uh, where you use a um, biometric device, um, like a, a you know a smart watch um, or like a, a band. There's a number of them, products out there that basically take some basic biometrics, and it, it works in combination with that and a smartphone. And what the app does is it reads certain biometrics and determines whether or not the person is going into a certain state. And if they are, it provides a warning to that person to say, hey, be aware, you, you know, you're, you're about to have an episode. And then what it also does is it allows them to list um, family and friends to be notified. And what it will do is it will send an alert to their family or their friends with a location to say, hey, you know, your, your loved one is, is suffering from a, uh, an episode. They're located here. They need help. Okay. So this will cover anyone that has um, anxiety or panic attacks? Anybody, anybody that has, um, you know, severe anxiety or panic attacks, that kind of thing, yes, it'll work work for them. Wow. I can think of a lot of people that apply for it. Well, that's what we're hoping. And then the other application is an artificial intelligence application, and it's more focused on the therapy side. So because one of the big issues, um, particularly with um, – with, um, disabled veterans is the stigma associated with getting treated. So what it does is um, we're, we're creating essentially a virtual therapy environment where you can get the necessary therapy and get it in a virtual setting. Um, that way you avoid the stigma of the treatment, and but you still get this, the necessary treatment you need. Uh, what we have built with it are what we call the um, – the, um, treatment protocols so for example there's a a, a light room there's a uh, sound room there's a music room there's a um uh, there's a half a dozen d different types of therapy that are given a right. with, with, um, and then what's left i have to build out is the um the, the virtual center if you will and this is going to be the, probably the major application that we build where therapists will be able to register and the patients will be able to register in and then create that kind of virtual treatment environment. And that's what we're working on now. Um, wow. So, uh, but wow. feel free to reach out um, to me um, separately from here. If you go to leathernecktech.com slash appointments, mm -hmm. uh, you can just schedule an appointment with me anytime. And I'm happy to talk to you. Fantastic. Okay. Well, this was right. a very good session. Thank you so much. I'm glad. Hey, Eric, yes. Eric, Bob, you may want to check your chats. Okay. Uh, there's a message from Tim. Okay, I'm looking right now. Okay. That's just thought I'd let you know. Thank you. And I have another question too, Derek. Okay. Um, so the question that, uh, from Tim basically is, um, where do I find your latest documents? Okay. They're go they are in a uh, G Drive, and it is, um, if you're not sure you have access to it, um, just send me your email address, and I will make sure that you're added into it. There's two, two um, folders that I've shared. One is basically for forms, and then the other one is um, basically the general documents from th these sessions. Um, so, again, if you don't think you have it, just send me your email address, and then I'll make sure you get it. Um, as far as um, my comfort level now with Everless and an LCS for my corporate clients, um, yeah, my comfort level is much, much higher now than it was in the past. Um, and I'm actually, uh, as I said, I'm, I'm actually building out um, a, a solution for um, this insurance company, and it's, it's foundationally based on Everless and an LCS. So, yeah, I'm feeling much, much more comfortable.
Um, now, keep in mind that that's also in tandem with the fact that I've got extensive development capabilities. Um, so I'm able to do some things that maybe some of you guys may not be able to do. But just in general, yeah, I'm much, much more comfortable. And certainly for the, the SMB market, uh, no problem at all. Um, and then finally, let's see, I'm, here, I'm going to push it in. I had a question. Okay. Um, uh, Linda, if you're still on, uh, why don't you stay on after everybody leaves and, and you and I can chat. Um, and to, now, who was asking that? Was that uh, Naomi? Lynn. Oh, Lynn, yes. Go ahead, Lynn. Actually, it, it's unrelated to what you talked about, but I was wondering maybe you have some suggestions. Um, I did get the link for Video Geyser that okay. I get, and um, but my um, uh, anti malware is is telling me that the passwords are sent unsecured, and I've had that trouble on some of the other sites too. And I've emailed Chad and Karthik to let them know, but I haven't yep. even gotten a response yet. <laughs> Much less is it fixed. So, any suggestions? Um, well, I'll tell you what, let me see what happens when I go to install it. I, I haven't installed it yet. Oh. Um, let me take a look at it. Um, you know, in general, what I'm going to suggest to you is that um, as long as you know the source and the vendor and you've got faith and trust in the source and the vendor, you can turn off your any, you know, your, your security product and go ahead and install it. Um, you know, certainly if you didn't know Chad, you didn't know Karthik, and you didn't know what the source of the, the, the product was, then I'd say, yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's warning number one, and you, you stop everything and you don't install. Oh, um, right, right, yeah. But in this case, because you know who it is, um, you're safe to install. Now, well, this is just to you know, it does the raise a question, though, but, you know, for your own customers, um, because that will certainly raise a question with your customers. So it's certainly worth putting it into uh, the help desk um, and continuing to kind of push on the issue because, you know, that will be something that other customers will, will uh, run into and they're going to have a question about it. Yeah. This is even just trying to log into the online. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I get it. Um, okay. that, that, that's what I would suggest. And I'm, I'm, I'll certainly have a discussion with them as well if I run into it. Okay. I was hoping okay. that might. Yep. No problem. Speed that up a bit. <laughs> All right. There All right. Anybody I else? Something about eight o'clock here. Um, at eight o'clock, there is a, um, a session for the uh, blog. I mean, the uh, bot. Um, if you registered for it, it's a three-day um, session. The chat is teaching. Oh, I missed that. Got sidelined this year. Okay. Yeah. Um, you may still be able to register for it. I, what I would do is just um, shoot them a, a quick. Um, uh, message um, and uh, see if they can send you the link. It, it's all over the um, uh, Facebook. Is it all, is it all in Facebook? Uh, yeah, it's all over it. Like Chad, go to Chad's wall. He started this whole thing last Friday, I think it was, where he started. I know. Talking we had about people this. here and I saw that, but I didn't get, I haven't been on the computer in that. Yeah, so go to Chad. Go to chadnicely.com. Um, no, no, no. Pro, no, no. Where, where is it? It, it's on the Facebook, Chad Nicely. In, in fact, not oh, chadnicely.com. Okay. Got it, got it, so, got it. That was, okay. yeah. Yeah, okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, guys, that's it for tonight. Thank you very, very much. Um, Linda, if you're on, why don't you stay on when everybody drops off and you and I can chat real quick. Thank you, Derek. Okay, you're very welcome. All right, good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.